This is 55 Factory, we are 55 TV. We are with Ron English. I love your work. I've been looking at your stuff literally yesterday and, and today I said to the guys, I want to see this guy, I want to meet you. Um, it's great to meet you. Oh, very, very nice to meet you. <laughs> Over a pizza as well, how yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, tell me about the background and the subject matter of your work. Um, which piece in particular are you talking about? Uh, in general, really. Um, most recently, most of my work is about being a child in the 50s, so a lot of it's the, the cultural touchstones and also my relationship to, to pop culture in the 50s, which is probably not what my parents thought the relationship was. How do you feel the emotional attachment to street art, street art is in contemporary art on an emotional level? Do you, do you think there's an emotional attachment with street art? Oh, I think, I think people like street art because anybody can do it. And all you have to do is go out on the street and do art. And you don't have to ask anybody's permission, you know? And I think that it's a very democratic form of art, and people like that. Because, you know, maybe people go to Mary Boone Gallery and they go, really, this is the best artist in the whole world, and you've, you've looked at every artist? And, well, no, she hasn't. She's, you know, she doesn't really look at that many artists. But, you know, if people step, put their stuff on the streets, everybody can put their stuff on the streets, and then, then anybody can walk around and say, well, that one's the best ever. But, I mean, but now, now we can see all the artists. It, everybody's been revealed. Do, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, we've been around here for, like, two days now, and we've been on the streets looking at the art, seeing the artists actually making the art for real in real time. Who did you see? Oh, I don't even know. You have to speak to our art director. But we've seen a lot of artists. Um, we've been to shows where there's been people that literally have got money coming out of their pores. And then the street level, these people doing art on the street that have no money. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, la last year was really interesting because um, we were invited to do the Wynwood Walls. And I petitioned really hard to get to do that. The year before, they had Kenny Scharf and Futura and all these like major artists. And my gallery, you know, really petitioned hard for me to do do a wall there, and I was I was very I felt very pri privileged to, to get to do a wall there. So I'm doing my wall, and we had a spray paint sponsor, and he just brought out thousands of cans of spray paint. It's like this is like what heaven looks like to artists, just sure. this really great spray paint. And um, I was keeping it in the warehouse, and they said, no, you have to sit it outside the warehouse because we're going to do something in there. And I said, well, I don't really have where to put it. I'm just staying in a hotel room. And they said, I'll just put it out by your mural. It's all locked up. Well, I'm you know I'm thinking well. Shit, you got to somebody climb that fence, and kids, you know, will will steal it. Well, it turns out kids were coming from all over the country, and I met kids who, like one guy said, he quit his job. You know, another guy said I had to pay my phone bill for three months to, to get the money to rent a van to come here. But I mean, people were just coming here like this was the graffiti Woodstock, and they didn't have a wall, they didn't have anything lined up, they didn't know what they were gonna do. They just, I'm gonna get there, and I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I can, you know. So all those kids, all that spray paint, they all climbed the fence and just slaughtered the whole neighborhood with my, my spray paint. But um, I have one more interesting story if you have one second. Absolutely. Because, you know, property owners have always hated graffiti artists. Because you know, usually they're just scrawling their name sure. or some weird tag. And, and street artists and, and, and the, the top level of graffiti artists are something very different than a, a tagger. Mm. And, and you know, to me, they've always been artists, and they just—it just—it was society's fault that society didn't know how to absorb them. Do you know what I mean? It didn't know what to do with them. It has more artists than they knew what to do with. Which, it's—it's it's like we have more flowers growing. Let's just mow them all down or pave over them or something. Yeah. It was like almost society's attitude. Yeah. But you know, the artists aren't criminals. They're—they're—they're they're, they're giving something to, oh, to society. And especially this, this this area is a fine example for it, isn't it? Well, here's what happened. The the um they, they took my you know. The, so they took a lot of spray, but anyway, the, the, the kid's scrawling something, you know, and he's just like scrawling his name. And, you know, the, the, the property owner comes out and goes, catches him, you know, and he goes, what the, what the hell are you doing? And he goes, I don't know. And he says, well, and, and instead, instead of like arresting him or chasing him away, he goes, you just write your name. It's retarded. It's, it's, and then he's like, well, what do you want? And the kid's like, I want to paint a beautiful mural. And he goes, really? Yeah. But I just have to scroll my name because I have to do a quick and run. Right. And he goes, okay, you know what? I'll tell you what. That's your wall. You got all night to paint it. And he came back the next day, the most amazing thing you ever saw. And he goes, that's that's insane. He goes, you know what? I have about 200 friends that have come in from all over the country. I, you know, you have all these buildings. Would you give them all to? And he goes, yeah. And three days later, all of his buildings, there were these just bland buildings, were all covered with the most amazing stuff. And the guy's standing there going, 
holy shit, they came and did all this for free. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, three days earlier, he was about deciding whether he was going to have the first kid arrested or not. Three days later, he's, he's got, like, the Museum of Modern Art on his walls for free. And to me, that was like a turning point. Suddenly, I think these, these building owners realized that these kids aren't criminals. They're not trying to break in. They're not trying to steal anything. They're trying to contribute something, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're actually almost the opposite of criminals. Sure. You've got um, four blocks that way, another two, three blocks that way, two blocks that way, and three blocks that way. Puerto Ricans, English, Americans, Europeans, the whole place is covered with art on um, scaffolding, ladders, high vault cranage on the street level, on the floor. It's quite in inc incredible. The whole area is a piece of work, would you say? Yeah, it's just like this explosion. It's the most amazing stuff. And it's not just art, it's great art. And every, every kid that comes here to paint or every person my age that comes here to paint, you know, they know that it's like everybody's bringing their A game and you have to be better than them. So it's, it's very competitive and you have to just kind of blow everybody away. And just when you think you've done the most amazing thing, you look to your left and somebody's just blowing you away. Great. It's great to meet you. Cool. Fit 5 CV. Yeah.